Hey guys, this is Irie Starcraft, and I'm back to cast another 2v2 match for you, and this one will be on Scorched Haven, and this game was sent to me by a new, a first-timer, the first time he has sent me any game, so I will reveal who sent this to me after the game, so as not to spoil anything, and let me introduce the teammates Aeon Blue, the Red Zerg, forgetting to set his rally point on the drones, hopefully he realizes that shortly. Because, yeah, now that he sets that rally point, always a uh, critical to get as much money out as you can at the beginning. And his teammate will be Bazooka Benji, the blue Terran, throwing down his supply depot here in the back, opting not to wall up. Interesting against a Zerg opponent, as his opponents will be Shirub Down, the purple Terran, and his teammate is Et Universum, which sounds like it's Latin or something, but... Um, yeah, he is the Teal Zerg and not using his Overlord to scout, so um, a bit of a wasteful play there. Just finally now sending that Overlord out, at least get it to cover the front of your ramp. A second Overlord already on the way. I wonder if he just forgot to send that out. Most likely that is the case. Shrub down, opting to build on the low ground, so he is going to be definitely trying to fast expand and set up some defenses um, to help secure that. So... Um, <laughs> So yeah, this game, uh, it looks like Aeon Blue uh, getting his spawning pool down was uh, what was a 13, a 12, or 13, so pretty standard timing on that. Um, meanwhile, though, uh, Ed Universum's spawning pool is starting to near completion. Looks like he had a, a, a much quicker time on that spawning pool, so we'll probably be seeing some Zerglings out early for him as Bazooka Benji and Aeon, Aeon Blue are uh, chatting it up here in Ally Chat. And... Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if they're saying, I guess he's saying depends on his mood, what race he likes to play. Um, I guess I understand that a little bit, though I have been playing random myself um, all the time. Um, I pretty much have gone back to random. I started playing Terran for a few games for like a day or two in a row, and then I switched to Protoss for a couple days in a row. And I used to play Zerg when I first got the game. I was playing Zerg all the time. And I think I'm actually better at Terran and Protoss, but you guys have all heard me say that probably before. Anyway, so um, so nothing new for you guys there. I want to check the scouting right now and see what people know. Aeon Blue and Bazooka Benji have done no scouting at all. This is a um, this is a diamond level game. I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, I'm 99% sure this is a diamond level game. So interesting. So late on the scout for Bazooka Benji there at Universal though, does not have any scouting himself. Um, something to say about that, I guess, um, is when I'm ter uh, Terran or Protoss, I always send out an early... I usually send my SCV, the one that's building my first supply depot, I will send that guy out to scout once he is finished. And then with Pro uh, when I'm Protoss, I send a quicker scout. Usually um, I go out and build my first pylon, and then I send that guy out to scout. But when I'm on Zerg, um, when I'm on Zerg, I... Sometimes I will send a drone out. Usually I don't in hopes that my Terran and or Protoss teammates will send something out because I'm usually trying to get some fast lings to do some early pressure at the beginning and I need every last drone on that middle line that I have. But uh, at Universum, after going for a fairly early spawning pool, has decided to throw down some static defense in his base, which really doesn't make much sense because... I mean, Shurub Down has been building down here in the low ground. I'm not sure if these guys probably are random teammates because they didn't think that part through beforehand. Shurub Down actually throwing down two tech labs on these barracks in the front, so those tech labs are quite exposed right now. To if uh, if Bazooka Benji and um, and uh, Aeon Blue wanted to do some damage right now, they could probably the Marines could sit back here and kill these tech labs without even being able to be shot at by Shurub Down's Marines in the back. So. A bit of a risky play there. Actually, one of these, I said that I, th I assumed this was a barracks. It was a factory going down. All this stuff on the low ground. There's nothing in the main for Shrub down. So if some scouting could be done by um, by the red and blue team, they would have realized that the scan going off just now for Bazooka Benji. So he sees all this in the bottom, knowing that now is a good time to attack because these supply depots are very uh, squishy in the front. And so here we go. It looks like we are going to see some pressure coming in. These Marines need to move out to catch up with these Zerglings. And I'm sure they will be here in just a second. The Zerglings at the same time need to be waiting for Bazooka Benji. Actually has nothing on the production queue right now. Um, but uh, but at Universum getting out some roaches finally now to defend this, which is exactly what he needs because the roaches can stay behind the cover of these buildings and fire back. Whereas these Zerglings are kind of useless in the back here. They can't really do anything until this wall gets broken down. 
So I was going to say before they should think about doing some kind of drop play up in the front, but here comes the press at the front. There is a Hellion in the back that's torching up these Zerglings. The, there's a lot of Marines here in the back going to be focusing down one of these uh, supply depots so the Zerglings can get in, but at the same time the Roaches have finished for Ed Universum and he is going to be able to force this back. The Marines, Roaches, and Lings are going to be plugging that hole up. The Hellion trying not to get too far ahead of his, uh, his brethren Marines back here. The Marines are going to keep the pressure on from Bazooka Benji, it looks like, as Sheriff Down is trying to rebuild this supply depot. But the second depot is going to go down, and is he supply lock? No, he does have extra depots. So, but once this goes down, he will be locked at 46 over 46. He is throwing down additional depots. It looks like he is going to be throwing down additional depots, but look how exposed this base is right now. Bazooka Benji was trying to scout with this SCV, but since the wall off, the SCV ended, running, ended up running all the way around the top getting stuck up there. I'm sure they'll realize that is still up there at some point. More SCV is being transferred down by Shrub down to this expansion, which is now out. Bazooka Benji wisely thinking change of plans. There, There's way too much defenses in here. We are going to tech and expand. And that is really the two options right now is try and tech and ex try and expand and tech up to try and catch up to your teammates who have secured their bases. Really, at Universum needs to be throwing this expansion down ASAP. It's been protected this entire time. Just now he is reading my mind and throwing that down. Bazooka Benji most likely, yeah, he is getting his own expansion. And Aeon Blue is working on his. He does have a bunch of roaches of his own out. So, um, yeah, it looks like we're going to see a bit of a defensive play here. I was going to say that the other option that they had is to try and do a shenanigans-based attack, which is a term that I just made up which would involve trying to get units up onto this high ground somehow, whether that be with a proxy pylon and an overlord, a dropship, a nidus network, a warp prism, which there won't be any warp prisms in this game because there are no protoss in this game. So yeah, that's pretty obvious. But um, yeah, even using siege tanks, you can. what you could do is you can put siege tanks down here and seize them up and then bring uh, units and drop them off on the top and then the, one, the, the tanks on the bottom will be able to... Um, to support the, that dropship on the top with the gained vision of the medevac. So we'll see. I thought I saw a dropship loading up. I did. This dropship has six marines and a marauder, so Bazooka Benji wisely is going to be trying to do some harassment while he sets up this expansion. But the creep spread very good from Et Universum. He does have vision of this entire backside of his base. I'm wondering, is that why Bazooka Benji, he, he did double back there for a second. I'm not sure, maybe that was a misclick. That is something that I do sometimes, is I forget that my medevac was in the control group for like my other uh, for my other units, and then I'll move them, and then my dropship will turn around unnecessarily. It's just a new play, basically. Something to, something to pay attention to when you're gonna send off a drop. Make sure you split off those guys and make them into a different control group. So here comes the drop from Bazooka Benji. How much damage is he gonna be able to do? There are spine crawlers here that will prevent him from pressing out too far, but how many drones are gonna go down? Really though, at Universum just now realizing this is here, he's pulling his drones back wisely. Doing that, this queen though, not being controlled very well, it will probably go down because these marines have noticed this queen right here. And now all the units for A Universum and Shrub Down have come back to try and defend this. And the dropship is going to lift off, or not lift off, the dropship will pick up all the units are saved for Bazooka Benji. He's going to continue to harass with this dropship. Possibly could think about dropping down here. A lot of damage could be done because these units still are stuck over here. They have to run all the way back down and playing cat and mouse. There are two. Hellions though blocking this here and this Thor right here is going to ward this uh, dropship back. So dropship in a lot of trouble with these marines if they could have stemmed up and taken that out there. Maybe Shurub down deciding it's not worth to use the stem or he didn't have it yet. He actually did not have that stem yet. He has Thors on the field but no stem. Interesting there. But Bazooka Benji continuing to try and harass with this dropship. Will it get intercepted here? This queen is trying to intercept it. Actually the queen is running straight back to the main. So this dropship will come back home. The damage being done, a bunch of drones did go down. Let's check the units lost really quick to see who is in the lead. Ed Universum is the furthest behind because of that drop harassed by Bazooka Benji. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to take a had to take a drink there. Bazooka Benji continuing to get more tanks. He's got more marines. He's got a bunch of marauders here. <coughs> and he is bringing um, an SCV. I guess he's, yeah, he is going to try and get another expansion down here in the bottom right. This medevac, I'm sure, will probably go... I'm, he may just wait and bide some time with that medevac and then go back to harass some more later when he knows the army is out of position for his opponents. Mm. Um, 
because that medevac is just chilling there is not going to rejoin the main army yet both uh, teams just choosing to macro up more and more uh, bazooka benji did a little bit of harassment there <coughs> but uh, so a lot of creep spreading d nicely done there by aeon blue the problem is that his opponent that his opponents do have a zerg player so when the battle comes once the battle is on the creep will be pretty much a wash because there's a zerg uh, a player on the other team but don't forget about the vision that you get from all this creep so even if uh, even if you're playing against it if you're a zerg and you have a zerg opponent you may think well I don't need to spread my creep because they have a zerg too so it's not gonna make that that big a difference well it does matter especially scouting wise these uh, this creep could be continuing to press out to get more and more scouting of this center um, but one thing to worry about when you do that obviously is if you have a Terran teammate like he does if you creep out too much you won't allow your Terran partner anywhere to expand because they can't land their buildings on your creep so that is something to keep in mind so what I will do sometimes like if I were in this situation I would be creeping out on one side and then I would use that one for myself if I chose to do that and leave maybe one of them open for my Terran teammate if we decided to take the gold in the middle. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just need to switch back to production there. <clears throat>